Hi, and welcome to the Theme Park Duo Podcast. Grab your park map, churro, and hop in line with us as we take you on a coast-to-coast adventure through the world of theme parks, haunts, conventions, and more. Now, here's your hosts, Nikki and Gabriel. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a very special episode of the Theme Park Duo Podcast. I am your host, Gabriel. Nikki is currently out giving Aaron a bath. And I am here with a very good friend of the show, one of the hosts of the Grim Grinning Hosts podcast, Mr. Kenny. How are you, sir? I am good. Thanks for having me back, dude. Any opportunity to get you on our show, uh, have have a few laughs. Has, uh, has anybody ever told you, I, I like how you turn on your podcasting voice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we chatted a little bit before we started recording, and I like how you flip a switch and you have a literal podcast voice. I like it. Well, there's there's definitely the the normal voice, the podcast voice, and then there's the work voice. Oh. So there's, there's three different voices that Nikki gets to hear all the time. There's probably so, a dad voice in there too, right? Oh, there's definitely a dad voice in there. Yeah, definitely a dad voice in there. So I guess there's four different voices. But I mean, yeah, I mean, kind of have to have your podcast voice a little bit, I guess, right? Sure. If you want anyone to take you serious, of course. I mean, if I talk in my real voice, which kind of sounds like this, nobody <laughs> would really take me seriously. As I say, guys, I really like Rise of the Resistance. I think it's a really good ride. Yeah, it's it's like night and day. The first time I recorded with you, I was like, who is this guy? Yeah, That's I know. How now you know now I sound way better. You could take my my opinion seriously. <laughs> hey, uh, can you please wear your mask? Uh, uh, can you wear your mask, please? <laughs> You see, you see what I'm saying? Like it's just, it just works all around. Yeah. So, but uh, we have you on the show to come on and talk about a very special thing that you and the Grim Grinning hosts have been doing with a bunch of other podcasts. And from what it sounds like, it really sounds like a really cool opportunity to share with a lot of different people and something that's for a good cause, especially given the circumstances of our country and the state that it's in at the moment. Yes, yes, there's a, there's a lot going on these days. And um, I have to give all the credit to my man Hunter over on the Grim Grinning Host podcast. Um, with all this going on... Um, Hunter is very passionate about Black Lives Matter. I mean, we all are, but definitely Hunter is like next level. Um, And so I'm going to definitely give him a a huge chunk of the credit here uh, because he um, very quickly, very promptly went out and organized. He wanted to uh, create a charity to generate money for Black Lives Matter. And um, so Hunter... Um, aside from from hosting, being our main host over at Grim Grinning Hosts, um, he's also uh, the newbie on the team over at a, uh, a a podcast by the name of Catacombs of Halloween Horror Nights. If you've not heard of that show and you're into Halloween Horror Nights, that is an outstanding podcast to to check out. Um, and he's uh, not only new to the team, but he's kind of taken over the hosting duties over there. And talk, um, talk about a talk about a podcast voice. Tell you that. Tell you that much. Oh, yeah. Tell you that much. Yeah, he puts on his real professional voice. He's silky, <laughs> silky smooth when he slips into podcast voice. Um, Which I'm going to have to check out that podcast because I just got really into the history behind some of the storylines of Halloween Horror Nights there in Orlando. Oh. With Carrie, Ohio. Oh. You know, all man. that stuff. Dude. It really, uh, it really reminds me of, of Scary Farm and kind of what they do there with uh, their whole backstory for Ghost Town. So, Really excited to actually listen to that. Yeah, Matt and Quint were the original hosts over there, and they did such an outstanding job. They started the podcast leading up to um, Halloween Horror Nights 25, and they their their whole idea was to do a rundown of the entire history of the events um, at year by year leading up to 25. And honestly, it was really the podcast that got me – uh, really convinced me to finally start going to the event for 25 and I have not looked back since. So well, I uh, go. yeah, I love those guys over there and Hunter does a great job. And 
Uh, actually, that podcast is part of a uh, podcast network by the name of Neozaz. It's a real weird name. I've never understood <laughs> it. One day I'm going to ask Matt. We're going to we're going to drink and I'm going to ask him what it means. But uh, <laughs> Neozaz has a very rich history. Um, a lot of their shows have done a lot of really good charitable work. And so Hunter uh, has done a really good job of following suit and uh, I believe this is the first time Halloween or uh, Catacombs has done uh, charitable stuff for that network. So um, really good on them. Um, but anyway, what what we did here, um, he he wanted to put together basically a giant super podcast of uh, <laughs> he went out and he grabbed Avengers. up Avengers, yes. Avengers of podcast yeah the big old super group uh it's the uh yeah it's uh the velvet revolver that's a super group right <laughs> that's a good right. one yeah yes um the, the audio slave there we go is the audio slave of podcast halloween horror nights podcast but anyway uh yeah he 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 wanted obviously catacombs and ggh involved we also got uh the rip tour podcast and HHN 365. Um, also, our good buddies in the band Pangolin. They are a pop punk group out of Orlando. Uh, good, good guys over there. Uh, they got involved with this. And um, yeah, we all came together and we recorded an episode that was basically just a, a roundtable discussion about Halloween Horror Nights and what it means to all of us and just fun memories from the events and it was a really good time. And basically the show is done. It's available, uh, but it's, it's an exclusive show and we are looking for donations. Um, the original idea was for all of the money raised to go to the Minnesota freedom fund, but I, I'm not sure at this point, um, I believe that charity has raised so much money that I, I'm not sure. I, I don't even know if they're accepting money at this point, but I do know Hunter <laughs> was well, that's good. Uh, that's good. Yeah, it's great. Um, and I know Hunter is very passionate about making sure the money does end up in the proper place. And anybody who does donate, he's going to make sure he gets receipts sent out to everybody and all that. So everything is yeah. definitely on the up and up with all of it. But um, one dollar is all you need to to donate to receive the exclusive link for this podcast. Um, but where the where the real uh, where the real prize here is, uh, <laughs> we've got a gigantic prize pack. Like it's it's legit. I've not I've seen, I've seen some photos, my friend. Yeah. And boy, oh boy, does that get me a little excited. Yeah, man. Uh, five dollars. If you donate five dollars, it enters you to win this prize pack. Um, just for example, I'll just throw out a couple things. It's just the tip of the iceberg here. Uh, James Keaton, who is uh, Jack the Clown. Uh, we got James to sign a handful of Halloween Horror Night 25 park maps. Um, That's dope. It is. That's it's so dope. Fantastic. And actually, um, a very surprise appearance. He actually dropped in for a couple minutes on the podcast. <laughs> so Whoa. I couldn't Whoa. believe it. It was very surreal. It was nuts. Uh, John Mazzari, uh, composer of the soundtrack for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Hell um, yeah. He signed some stuff, some Killer Clown stuff. That will be going away and giving away. Uh, Shelby Denham, who um, does a bunch of Halloween Horror Nights fan art for yeah, the events. Really incredible artist. She's yes. really talented. Shelby's amazing. She's fantastic. Um, she's also one of the the new co-hosts along with Hunter over at Catacombs. And she also did the uh, the logo for Helping Haunts, the, the, the charity. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, so she's got some signed art. There's a Halloween Horror Nights Ghostbuster event shirt. I believe that's Hunter's personal shirt he decided to throw into the pot here. Um, mm -hmm. Travis Terrell, uh, one of the other GGH co-hosts. Um, he's a he's that dude is one of the best theme park photographers out there. Like, legitimately, I wouldn't even be <laughs> saying like if if not for being my buddy, I'd still say that about him. He's got fantastic. Sure, 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 sure. Just look at 
I don't know his Instagram because his Instagram and his Twitter are different. <laughs> and what fan harassing. are you? <laughs> yeah, just look Travis Terrell up on Instagram and you'll see his stuff. But I believe his Killer Clowns uh, Scare Zone photo is signed and part of this package. Um, and then uh, one of the other big things, uh, three of the four, maybe four out of the four podcasts, but definitely three. Uh, are offering up guest spots to the winner. So, oh, like, oh, that's very cool. On each of the shows and talk Halloween Horror Nights with everybody. It, uh, you know, good stuff. And that, like, there is an endless amount of other miscellaneous, random Halloween Horror Nights centric stuff. So, if um, if you're just a fan of Halloween Horror Nights, like, it is an absolute just treasure trove of stuff. Um, but really. In reality, you know, even if you're not interested in the prize pack or even the podcast for that matter, and you just want to donate money to a to a great cause, you know, um, yeah. I'll pass along some links and uh, hopefully you can get them in the in the show notes here um, about where to head to make those donations. Uh, we're just, you know, we're trying to raise a ton of money for this. And as of Yesterday, I haven't gotten an update today, but as of yesterday, we are just under three thousand dollars. That's phenomenal, dude. That's so yeah. great. It's fantastic. Um, and we have until June twentieth is the deadline. So whenever you're listening to this, hopefully you'll have a little bit of time to still get in there and uh, make some donations and uh, you know pass it along. Tell. Tell some friends, tell some some family, you know, anybody else who's passionate about what's going on and would like to help out and contribute in in any little way, you know. Yeah, or, and and all the information for uh, donation will be found on our website in the show notes. Literally anywhere you can find this show, you'll be able to find information on how to donate and how to uh, become a part of this. Yeah. Um, in in all honesty, man, I'm going to be real, really real here. This isn't like a full normal episode of the show, clearly. Yeah. And uh, you know, not all the we don't always get like super deep about things, but with all of the negativity and venomous things that are happening in our world right now, the people of this community coming together to try to at least help in some manner gives yeah. me a whole bunch of hope for humanity yes because it's a lot of people who care it's a lot of people who are about inclusivity being together and it isn't about the color of our skin it isn't about where we come from it is about being human yeah and seeing people contribute seeing people donate seeing people voice their opinions on social media even now has been such a uh, a light and so much darkness right now yeah. and and watching you guys being able to at least spearhead this and move forward in at least in the haunt community having people donate is incredible and i commend your guys's efforts in doing so and if anything that i can do to contribute to that in any small way we will do it in a heartbeat because i i love this message i love what you're doing and hopefully uh will you guys will raise a good amount of money to go to a fantastic cause. Yeah. Well, I I appreciate the generosity of of just even letting me come on to even just plug the charity. I mean, I'm literally just calling in favors to friends and just trying to get this cause out to as many platforms as possible, just to reach as many ears and eyes as possible and just, you know, one donation if we if we can snag one donation out of the theme park duo audience that's one more than we would have had so the generosity of just um you know posting this little mini episode is a, a tremendous help and and does not go unappreciated so mm -hmm. um yeah I, I mean i've had a lot of conversations with people lately and I, i've been very open and honest about the fact that you know this is something that's um it's it's uncomfortable to say the least for some people to talk about, because it's, it's one of those things where this is not necessarily in everybody's lane. This is not the kind of stuff that you normally, um, not everybody is constantly involved with these types of discussions. And like, for me personally, 
when everything started happening, I felt a level of guilt because I didn't know how to put myself out there. I didn't know how to help. And I, I sort of had thoughts and opinions about it and felt at first like, oh, you know, I don't, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I'm not sure what to do. So maybe the best thing for me to do is to just sit back. And then I just realized watching everybody else get involved, like, no, that is not the right thing to do. Like yeah. be, be vocal, get out there. Like, if it makes you uncomfortable, tough, like, you know, th this is going to, uh, like it, it'll help you grow. And in the process, it, if you can reach out and use any platform to provide an opinion and add to the discussion, it'll help somebody else maybe come out of their shell that they didn't know how to come out of. So, yeah, you know, just getting out on even social media or going out on any podcast that will have me on their show and to discuss these things, it's, it's a, it's a good thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I think like you said, it's definitely difficult because it is a very uncomfortable conversation to have, sure. um, especially you and I both not being uh, African-American at all. Yes. You know, we aren't, um, we don't know the pain. We don't know the feeling. We don't know what it's like yeah. to be treated in that manner. We don't know what it's like to have to live your life a certain way in order to just get by, you know, like you said, and I think you said it very well, it isn't just a, uh, it isn't just about sitting back and being silent, but using whatever platform you have to voice your opinion and to show support because that's, what's most important yeah. and to have conversations, yeah. open, honest conversations with people in order to unify everybody. Right. But I mean, for instance, when all this started, um, and this isn't, let's be, let's be very clear. This isn't just starting. This has been going on and that's yeah. the problem. It's been going on for too yeah. long. But when I say when all this started, I mean, when, when things really escalated a couple of weeks ago, um, the beginning saw, of the beginning of all of the protests, that yeah. happened across the United yeah. States and every 50 state and all 50 states and even in Europe and other countries. I, yeah. I mean, let's call it like the, the George Floyd incident. Like it's, yeah. you know, that was so wildly unacceptable and just so egregious that, I mean, that's, it's really was the tipping point in triggering a lot of all of this to start going down. And, you know, I sat there, and for the first day or two had thoughts like, well, you know, I like, good. I'm glad this is all happening. I'm glad that things are going down. I personally don't know what to say. And I had a lot of thoughts like, look, I don't have a racist bone in my body. So like, I'm good, right? No, no, you're not. That's not like, that's not good enough to sit back and just feel like you're not part of the problem. So don't say anything. That was a big realization for me in like, oh yeah, that's what privilege is. You know what I mean? The fact that yep. you don't need to know what it feels like to be oppressed in that way, that's that's privilege. And so take that fucking privilege. Sorry for the language. I don't know if you're trying it to. It is allowed. It is allowed. Okay, all right. This is uh, a very uh, passionate conversation. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, take that privilege and do something with it. Get out there. Get fired up. You know, help, help things. Help things move along. Um, and so... You know, just whatever that it just means find whatever lane you can get in and however you can get involved. If that just means, you know, maybe you don't want to post things on social media, but share things. That's fine. Like that's that's helping. That's, you know, retweet things on Twitter that you, uh, you know, find, uh, you know, I I. Um, was seeing a lot of things as a parent. I, I, I'll use this as an example. As a new parent, I was seeing things about like, you know, people were sharing books that sort of explain diversity to kids. Yeah. Like, so I shared that thread because that was a really good thread I felt for, you know, I've got a couple of small children who I would like to raise to be very decent human beings and not know what racism is, hopefully, uh, you know, so, so getting books like that is something that I felt was important or, you know, maybe share some tips on people that are going out to protest, how to go out and safely protest. I, you know, retweet that kind of stuff. 
help yeah. share those sorts of things, you know? Yeah. Any little thing, any little lane that you can get involved in is better than nothing, just sitting back and not getting involved. Yeah, and, and Russell, you were talking about retweeting and things, you know, on social media. There's um, There is a person on Twitter that I follow that... Um, I didn't really look at a lot of his posts all the time, but when all this started, he started posting quite a bit of things that I felt were actually essential to read and that were actually factual and really important. His name is Sean Rosell. Uh, his handle is uh, Sean. <laughs> I can't read it from here. It's Sean Go Sean G Orlando. Um, and he's been he's he's a black guy and he's been posting his opinions on the situation and the light of, you know, uh, racism in this world. And it's been really interesting to read his perspective on this stuff, because it's something that I just like you said, it's a privilege not to be in that situation and to not view it a certain way. So I've been viewing it in this light and really delve deep into these things. And it's been really educational. And I think it's important to to hear that side. And to understand yeah. that side. Um, and, you know, for us, you know, both me and you are dads. We're dads. And, you know, we never want our kids to to know the ugliness of the world. And I think that's something that you and I share. We want to make sure that our kids grow up to be loving, understanding, compassionate people. And yeah. I, I do think, uh, to a certain extent, it's important for our kids to understand there are people like this in the world who judge you by the color of your skin, who judge you by the person you love and, and things of that nature. I think it's important for them to understand that that exists so that they can never be that. And in raising our kids to learn how to love instead of hate, because hating is a learned thing. It isn't, it isn't born with people. You yeah. have to teach someone to hate. And I will never in a million years teach my kid to hate anybody for a different belief, a different uh, in skin tone, a different religion, a, who they love and who they don't. I will never do that. And hopefully, you know, it really seems like the younger generation, um, not the millennials, but the uh, Gen X kids seem to be really behind that message and that actually genuinely makes me happy and excited for the future of yeah. humanity and the United States because there's a lot of hate but love will always prevail in that way when it's much much louder just gotta drown out all that nonsense yeah it's a real important time for everybody to educate themselves learn from the past and make sure we don't make the same mistakes yes, going forward exactly. and for our kids and for future generations, just lead by example, you know, uh, mm -hmm. take what, take what we learn, you know, go, go read up, uh, go educate yourself, have those discussions, um, and, and learn, learn from the people that we need to learn from. And, um, just, be the best person you can be and, and lead by example for the younger kids coming up in this world. So we don't have this sort of garbage going on in the future. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, uh, this conversation can go on for a lot longer Yeah, <laughs> because it's, it's a very important conversation to have. Yes. But, um, but I want to thank you for coming on and, and talking about the cause and talking about your guys' charity uh, work that you're doing right now. And hopefully people who are listening to this episode or people who see the post will donate uh, some small amount to help a good cause. Because right now, uh, there's a lot of people who need help. Yes. And, and I'm willing, and Nikki and I are willing to do anything, even if it's just using our platform our podcasts, our Twitter accounts, our Facebooks to get the word out to help yeah. and support all of those people. Uh, we, we are willing to do that. And, and I, I applaud you guys for taking the step to doing it. And it was great to have you here and explain all the cool information, even the cool prizes people yeah. can win in order uh, to kind of get them to uh, in uh, incentivize them to donate. There's some, some great, 
great stuff in there like legitimately great stuff and um hopefully that's enough to entice you as if you needed enticing you know um yeah we, should, we just on, in all honesty there shouldn't be any enticing yeah to just be like i need to donate this is yeah. something i should be doing i mean for all, but, all the things we just talked about uh there's plenty of reason to donate to yeah. causes like this to begin with but in case yeah. you do want a little in, extra incentive like we just had a. Uh, it's been interesting uh, going going and doing a couple of these podcasts uh, on all theme park podcasts and not discussing any theme park stuff. It's been it's been interesting, but uh, that's how yeah, it's important. weird. It's how it's important really weird. this is. It is weird, but it's it's also uh, it's important and that uh, it speaks volumes to what this cause means. And so, you know, yeah, just yeah. it's a it was a, a blast of an episode. Um, there's a great prize pack and there's a great cause behind all of it. So give a buck, give five. If you want the prize, give more, if you feel obligated to, um, that would be awesome. Uh, let's see how much money we can raise. That's awesome. Thank you again for joining us, Kenny. And remember everybody, you. if you're interested in donating, make sure you look in the show notes. Make sure you look at uh, the website page, which is themeparkduo.com, and click on this episode. And we will also be posting the links on our social media channel, so you can find those links anywhere to support this great cause. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Gabe. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this week's show. It's a little bit of a bonus episode for everybody because this is a really important topic to us and something that we want to get behind and support, which we've already donated money to this. And hopefully if you're listening, you could uh, pitch in just a couple bucks to help support a great cause. So uh, make sure to follow the link in the episode description. We also have it on the website at themeparkduo.com. And uh, you can go and support a great cause. But once again, thank you so much for listening. Uh, if this is the first time you've listened to us, you've caught us on an episode <laughs> that isn't the normal. Uh, but uh, hopefully you will come back and listen to a normal episode of ours. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, you can find us at Theme Park Duo on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you want to email us, you can just email us at themeparkduo at gmail.com. Come. And once again, thanks for listening. And always remember, there's always a great big beautiful tomorrow. See ya. Thanks for riding with the Theme Park Duo. Make sure to gather all your belongings before the end of the podcast. Bye bye.